fish eye, anyone? So you'd be surprised how difficult it is to uh, take a macro shot of your own eye. A lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. However, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about fish eye lenses because um, I bought a fish eye lens. I did have one a while ago for Micro Four Thirds and I ended up selling that because it was the 7.5mm Samyang and when I did some comparison stuff between the fisheye and the Olympus 9 to 18 there was very little difference in terms of field of view between the 9mm end of the 9 to 18 and the 7.5mm so I just couldn't see a point of having um, the extra lens that really I, I probably felt I didn't need however I did miss it um, and so I decided to pick up another fisheye and the one I've picked up is this one um, yeah, you may you may be able to you may be able to see that there. It's a nice thing actually. It's a nice thing, and it's the Brighting Star um, 7.5 mil f 2.8, and I've got it for the Canon EFM mount um, to put on this M6. And uh, if you're doing an unboxing type video, you'd think, wow, it's got a really nice box and it does have quite a nice, it's only a push-on lens cap, but it fits well, hasn't fallen off at all um, yet. And the lens itself is very metal, feels very high quality, beautifully damped uh, focus ring and aperture ring. Um, it is fully manual. It feels quite heavy. It's quite a weighty little lens. Um, and I picked this one up because I'd seen some reviews online for the Bright In Star ones, um, but one or two people said they'd had some problems with the lens um, maybe coming apart inside slightly, screw loose or something. Um, so I went for the latest version, and I think it was a to be honest, I think it was a really good price, and I think I paid £92 for it, and they've gone up a little bit since then. But I think for a new lens, that's a really good price. Um, in Guildford, a couple of experiments. One uh, infrared, and one, as you may have guessed, fisheye. So, it's windy. Um, and it's patchy kind of sun so uh, we might get lucky with some sunshine no focus it's very difficult manual focus and the screen's too far away to see really however it's good to be out and about so fish eye and can we make fish eye interesting enough it's um, all a bit tricky really because it's a bit hackneyed isn't it if you overdo it so let's see what we can do in terms of a little bit of creativity with the fish eye maybe What's interesting, of course, about fisheye lens is that it gives you, um, you know, a distorted fisheye view of things. Um, and that can work uh, in some circumstances, but if you use it too much, it becomes a bit kind of hackneyed. Um, and what I've found so far is that the images that, um, that I've taken with it, I've been, been out to a couple of places specifically to try out this lens and one was to Woking and I went there because they've got some very tall buildings there and it's pretty much the only place within easy distance of where we live where there are some tall buildings. Um, so I went to Woking, took some pictures of tall buildings um, and it was quite interesting um, processing those afterwards. Uh, as usual with this Canon, I found processing the raw files. It's the, it can be quite, it's a big difference working with the the files in the Canon Digital Photo Pro software and Darktable, and I find them really hard work 
to get to where I like them in Darktable, much easier in the Canon software. However, in the Canon software, it has, there's no um, lens corrections for this lens. So you can get some, what I consider to be unpleasant effects, um, which are really difficult to get to get out of the images. And in Darktable, you you know there are more controls. There's more gr granular control, so you can. And also in Darktable, um, you can apply lens corrections to. Although this lens isn't in the table for the version of Darktable that I'm using, which is 3.8 something. Um, there are lenses of a similar focal length, so you can apply some lens corrections if you want to and I've got some I've got some images where um, I have applied some um, perspective correction in dark table and if I show you those now you'll see that what you can do if this is the original image um, in, uh, in, in in the Canon software and then if we move to the dark table version of that image and then we move to the perspective corrected version that was also in dark table and that that kind of whilst it does you know correct the image if you like it kind of um negates the point of using a fish eye lens but it's just an interesting kind of uh, interesting exercise really um Looking at some other images, there's some statues in the centre of Woking now. Um, big people, um, and the colours are the colours are fine, but different between Darktable and um, the Canon software. And it's just, I mean, I'm sure I could get them to the same point if I wanted to, if I worked hard enough at it. But uh, sometimes you don't want to work terribly hard to achieve something that. Um, easily achievable in another piece of software. I think there's another, there's another example here of um, a building near the station in, in Guildford. And again, the colours are, um, you know, you can get them to where you want them, but it's, it's, it's tricky. And there are definitely colours and processing aside, because that's all a bit, um, it's a bit of, you know, a bit of a, a, a personal thing depending on what software you use and it'll be different in obviously Lightroom and things like that. So I'm not an expert there by any means, don't use it. Getting back to the whole fisheye thing, there are definitely some scenes which work and some scenes which just don't work. And, you know, it's, it's all very well having this hugely wide perspective on things, but that just doesn't necessarily make a good image at all. Whereas if you pick the right scene, and I think this, this one under the bridge is a good example of something that works, to my mind, in terms of um, a, a fairly striking image, I think. Um, whereas this, this image in the High Street in Guildford, it, yeah, it gives you a big you know, kind of the big view from where I was standing, but it just doesn't really, um, doesn't really say very much at all, I don't think. It's not really a good image at all. Um, so I think fisheye, I'm glad I've gone back to it. I'm glad I have a fisheye again now, but yeah, I've got to be really careful how you use it. Thankfully, it's not a very big lens, so you can easily carry it with you, just on the off chance you may, um, be able to use it or may, may come across something where it's really useful. Uh, and something that, uh, that somebody else has said on, uh, on a YouTube um, video I saw was that interestingly with fisheye lenses, if you've got a subject that's already got a lot of curves in it, and for example, here's one of um, an underpass in Guildford where there's a lot of curves, that seems to work quite, quite well. Um, but I don't, I don't know why that is. But I guess it's partly because the result, you, you, you're not just introducing curves where there weren't any. You're just kind of, um, I want to say exacerbating, but that's probably not the right word. But you're, 
um, you know, you're bringing more curves into something, into a piece of architecture where there already were curves in existence. So it kind of doesn't look quite so out of place and quite so odd. So fish eyes, not for everyone and certainly not for every subject, but interesting nonetheless and worthy of some experimentation. If you're looking for uh, something uh, a bit different to try out, then I would thoroughly recommend trying out the fish eye end of things and uh, the Brighton Star 7.5. I think this is the, the, the this one is the version 3 I think um, and I'm really pleased with it, really good. That's it for today.